So, it's that time of year again. War Thunder's anniversary sale. Over the next week or so, almost everything is going to be available for half off, giving a lot to talk about. I'm going to be focusing on the naval premiums, going over each one and giving a short opinion on if it's worth buying based on its current performance. While I haven't played every premium, I have played most of them, or similar ships in the tech tree, along with asking other experienced naval players for their opinions on these ships. First, I want to cover a very specific group of premiums together, reserve premiums. Every country has one, sitting at 1.0. Sometimes they're a slight upgrade of the reserve ship, and other times they are a different ship entirely. These cost 250 golden eagles, or 125 on sale. Simply put, don't buy these. For one third the cost of a reserve premium, you can actually put a talisman on the reserve boat, which has a higher ward modifier and can be spawned three times. There's just no reason to get these. Now on to specific countries. I'll be covering Britain, Japan, and Italy's vehicles first, since they're on sale right now. After that I'll cover Russia, Germany, and America's vehicles, which go on sale on the 30th of October, and pack vehicles which go on sale at the 2nd of November. There's also the wild card of returning pack premiums, which I'll talk about towards the end. Now, without further ado, let's get started with the British tree. First is the MGB-75, which costs 1,000 Golden Eagles, or 500 on sale, sits at 2.0, and has a pretty good loadout in my opinion. It has a 40mm pom-pom which is aiming forward, giving it good firing arcs, a dual 20mm which is quite effective at this battle rating, and some Lewis guns which won't really do that much. Overall, this thing has good mobility, good firepower, low tankiness, and it's situated at a very, very good battle rating. 2.0 is the highest battle rating that doesn't actually see destroyers, making this thing pretty effective tier-wise. I would say that this is a good buy, it's rather cheap, seems pretty good, and I think it's just generally a good low-tier premium. Next up with the British tree is all the way down in tier 4 with the HMS Belfast. This is a rather good light cruiser, though it does have some very specific things to note. It has incredibly high tankiness, due to having rolled cemented armor, which doesn't actually produce fragmentation for some unknown reason, along with having torpedo belts that can block moderately large torpedoes. They also don't have any form of AP. While they do have SAP, it's more limited in penetration than many full AP rounds, which makes it better in some circumstances and worse in others. Generally, I'd say this thing's a bit of a close-range brawler, and at its normal price of 8,020 Golden Eagles, a bit too expensive, but at the sale price of around 4,000, certainly a pretty good buy. Though one thing that's worth keeping in mind, both with this cruiser and all other cruiser premiums, is that the coming Dreadnoughts are going to make them significantly weaker in the long run, so it might be worth considering holding off on this if you're worried about your investment rapidly depreciating. Next up is the Type 4 Model 4, a premium version of the Type 4 Model 2, which costs 850 Golden Eagles, or 425 on sale. Effectively, it has a few plane engines strapped onto the back, which increases maneuverability and top speed. The 37mm at the front is actually garbage, however the dual 20mm is pretty good, so if you do decide to buy this, I would recommend swapping to it with Alton 2, because this one provides actual damage output, while this one tickles your opponent at best. Overall, I think this one's a moderately good buy, it's very cheaply priced, and it's an alright ship. It's at an okay VR, and it phases a lot of things that it can kill pretty quickly with its main gun. Its mobility is pretty good, it's not very tanky at all, but overall I think it's not bad. It also is completely unique in its whole plane engine thing, which gives it a few style points in my book. Next up is the PGO2, which is actually our first pack premium, so it's not on sale yet, but will be soon. Normally it's $20, however on sale it's $10, and it comes with 2,000 Golden Eagles and 30 days of premium. The PGO2 isn't as good as it once was, though it is still pretty good. It has no tankiness whatsoever, but it has great mobility and great firepower. It's actually at a higher battle rating than some destroyers now, which can cause it some problems in matchmaking, however it does still tend to do quite well. Overall, I'd say this thing is probably worth it. $10 isn't that much for a premium like this at tier 2, and that 1,000 Golden Eagles and 7 days of premium certainly does sweeten the pot a bit. Overall, I'd give this thing a pretty high recommendation. It's quite cheap for a tier 2 premium, pretty good, and enjoyable, which of course matters quite a bit. Next up is the Akabono, which actually is not on sale. 
If you're planning to buy the Akabono, buying it during the sale will make no difference as it is recent enough that it does not get a price reduction. Next up is the Mikuma, which normally costs 8,020 golden eagles, but will cost 410 during the sale. This one boasts incredibly high survivability for a cruiser, along with excellent AP on its main guns, and Type 93 long lance torpedoes. However, it is worth noting the guns have a relatively slow fire rate, and it has rather poor anti-air capabilities. Overall, I'd say this one's a pretty good buy at 4,000 golden eagles, the Suzuya is doing alright in the current meta, and it is likely to hold its own against Dreadnoughts due to its powerful torpedoes and high power AP. I wouldn't say it's going to be on equal footing with them, but it will age better than many other premiums. So overall, I can give this one a pretty good recommendation. If you want to grind the Japanese tech tree, it is currently the best choice to do so. Up last for the current sales is Italy, who only have two premiums available that are pack premiums. First up is the Spadviero, which is normally $20, but will be $10 on sale, and comes with 1,000 Golden Eagles and 7 days of premium. While it is rather cheap, I would say that the PGO2 is significantly better, as the platform instability really hampers the Auto Malara Cannon. Overall, this one is alright. It's probably the best choice for grinding Italy as a premium, however, I would say it is a bit weaker than its contemporaries. So it does require a specific playstyle to use, namely flanking and going slower than your actual top speed in order to keep the gun stable. I kind of like it, but it is notably a bit on the weaker side as far as these premiums go. So I can recommend it for the price, however you should know what you're getting yourself into with it. Maybe watch a review or two first, kind of see how it does and decide if this is really what you want to put your money into. Next up is the Geniade which normally costs $40, is going to be on sale for $20, and comes with 2,000 Golden Eagles and 15 days of premium. Put simply, I cannot recommend buying this one. It doesn't have many torpedoes, it has 5 guns which is good, however they have a slow fire rate, and rather poor ammunition, but most notably, the silent killer of this ship, is its absolutely terrible accuracy. It has no consistency, it has poor anti-air, it has moderately good damage when it hits, but overall, this ship just isn't consistent enough for me to recommend. I would recommend buying pretty much any Destroyer Premium over this one, but we'll get to those soon enough. Up next is Russia's Naval Premiums, starting with the PR-123K, which is currently a 1,000 Golden Eagles, but going down to 500 soon. This is the same as the standard PR-123, however it has a hydrofoil design, lending itself to slightly better mobility if I'm correct with its performance. Overall, this is a good ship as far as I know, however it is at a very precarious BR of 2.3. While it is quite fast and effective, it will have to face destroyers, which can be a bit of a struggle. Luckily, with its incredibly high top speed and its relatively powerful and fast torpedoes, it can actually serve as a good counter to destroyers by getting in close and hitting them with a torpedo. If you like that kind of hit and run sneaky style, this would be a good premium for you. However, as a grinder, I would say that the next one I'm going to cover is a bit better, due to being a higher tier. Next up is the PR-1204. This one is similar to the Tech Tree version in that both have a PT-76 main gun. However, this one does not have the 30mm grenade launchers in the middle, and it swaps the rear 25mm turret for a rear 14.5mm turret. In many people's opinion, the 14.5mm turret is actually better, so this can be considered an advantage of the ship. It's also at a lower battle rating, notably. It costs slightly more than the PR-123K at 1,150 Golden Eagles or 575 on sale, and at Tier 2 it can grind all the way up to Destroyers. It's quite good against PT boats due to the relatively good PT-76 gun, and particularly the extremely powerful 14.5mm machine gun turret, however it does face Destroyers, which it has little to no chance against. Overall, I would say this one's a pretty good grinder, due to its low cost for the battle rating it's at. Next up is the MBK PR-186 MK85, which is about the same as the Tech Tree version, except it's at a higher BR, with significantly less armored turrets, where the only real advantage of them is being to able to elevate higher when they don't have an anti-air shell. It also has a high price of 3,850 Golden Eagles, or 1,925 on sale. Overall, I can't really recommend this thing, because it's at a very strange BR where it will face starting destroyers every match, and the effectiveness of the vehicle is entirely decided by whether or not the enemy facing it can penetrate it. 
it also works than the tech tree version and at a higher battle rating, which is kind of confusing, but okay. Next up is the PR7U Storni, which is rather expensive at 6,090 Golden Eagles or 3,047 Golden Eagles on sale. I would actually consider this a downgrade of the standard PR7U, as it trades one of the 37mm for a 76, which is significantly worse at anti-air duties. Overall, the ship has a bit of a strange playstyle, as the turrets have such a slow rotation rate that you kind of have to play it like a water M10. They have very high damage, however, it is difficult to get them onto a target quickly, and it only has four of them. Overall, I would say there is actually no reason to buy this one, not because of the ship itself, but the next ship I'm covering. Up next is the PR-41 Nustrashimi, which costs 7,080 Golden Eagles, or 3540 if it's on sale. This one has more torpedoes, the same number of guns, but they fire significantly faster, and an absurdly strong anti-air and anti-ship secondary suite of four quad 45s. This is probably the best destroyer premium out there, and it's only 4.7 fittingly. Overall, this ship is really, really, really powerful, and it still is even after, for some reason, the debatably worse sister ship went up to 5.0 when it stayed at 4.7, so this one has a bit of premium bias behind it too. Overall, it is incredibly powerful in damage output, however, it does have mediocre mobility, and its armor is rather poor. Overall, I would highly recommend this ship for the Russian tree. It's incredibly powerful and versatile. Just be warned that it very much has a glass cannon playstyle, mostly due to its rather poor hull armor and mediocre mobility. It is incredibly effective, however, if you're considering buying it, you should kind of know what you're getting yourself into with it, since it isn't really a conventional destroyer in how it's played. That's all for Russia, and next comes Germany, first with the Type M1943. This one's a bit odd, it has a PT boat spawn, it's very large and very slow, and it has two 10.5cm guns. This one is rather good against PT boats, however it does lack armor, and it's very slow, making it very easy to kill with destroyers. At its battle rating of 3.0, it will see destroyers almost every match too. Overall, I can't really recommend this one due to its high price of 3,850 Golden Eagles or 1,925 Golden Eagles on sale. While it is good against BT boats, it tends to just be a free kill for destroyers, and since you'll be facing them almost every match, it does make the ship very BR oriented in how it performs, which can be a bit frustrating. Next up is the Type 1939 T31, which is a slight upgrade of the Type 1939 T22 in the tech tree. This one has a relatively high price of 5,040 Golden Eagles, or 2,520 on sale. It's about the same as the tech tree version, though it does have a negligible increase in crew count and a bit more anti-air. I would say that this ship is alright. Having four 10.5cm guns at 3.7 is pretty strong, however it is vulnerable to some very, very brutal up tiers. Personally, I wouldn't really recommend this one due to the ship that comes after it, the Carl Galster. Next is that same Carl Galster, which is a premium version of the Type 1936. This one has five 12.7mm cannons, which personally are some of my favorite guns at this battle rating, the German one specifically, has 10 torpedoes, and an incredibly strong anti-air suite. I would say this ship's kind of a jack-of-all-trades that particularly excels at anti-air duties and longer-range destroyer fighting. It does have some bad up-tiers sometimes where it faces cruisers, however, those aren't that common. The main issue for the Carl Galster is facing American ships when it doesn't have full AP, However, I've found that the standard HE actually works well enough. Personally, I really like this ship, and I think it's a very powerful and fun one, though the price is a bit high at 6,090 Golden Eagles, or 3,045 on sale. I would recommend it if you want it. However, I do think that the next premium also makes this one a bit obsolete, just like this one did to the Type 1939. Up next is the Prince Eugen, which is a pack premium, which normally costs $60, but on sale costs $30, also coming with 2,000 Golden Eagles and 30 days of premium. This is, in my opinion, a rather effective cruiser. The guns have poor accuracy, however when they hit, they hit very hard and are actually able to easily detonate ammunition racks. 
The ship has a pretty high crew count and rather extensive armor, including a turtleback scheme, though it is worth noting that the frontal and rear ammunition isn't very well protected, which can lead to the ship being detonated quite easily by an experienced player. This won't insta-kill it, however it does deal very severe damage. The Prince Eugen also has a very extensive anti-air suite, most notably having 18 Bofors Flak 28s. Overall, I quite like this ship. I find that it does have some issues, namely the accuracy and the frontal ammunition rack. However, I do think it is generally effective enough to be worth recommending, especially at the price of $30. As noted previously, Dreadnoughts are going to make a lot of cruiser premiums significantly worse. However, I do think that the Prinz Eugen will age better against them due to having a high number of long-range torpedoes, along with high penetration APCBC. It's not going to be on equal footing with them, However, it will certainly be a better counter than many other cruiser premiums. Overall, I'd say it's a pretty good buy for $30. Just know that Dreadnoughts might cause it some issues soon enough. The first ship for America is the 165-foot PC-466 Carmi. At 1,150 Golden Eagles, or 575 Golden Eagles on sale, I quite like this thing. It has two 76mm cannons, where the Tech Tree version only has one, however it does trade for Orlikon cannons for this. This means that it's better at long-range engagements, however it's worse at close-range engagements and anti-air duties. The asking price is okay, however it is worth noting that it is only a Tier 1 premium, so it may be better to invest in something later in the Tech Tree, which can grind further. This one is rather cheap on sale, so I would recommend it. If you're curious about trying Naval, it's also quite a good choice, as it has a very, very good lineup with American 1.7 and 2.0, and it is a larger ship than most of the ones it faces, which can kind of give an idea of how the larger ships play. So, I would personally recommend this one, though if you have more Golden Eagles, it's probably worth investing in something later in the tech tree as a better grinder. Next up is the PT-556. This one is particularly powerful against lightly armored targets due to its quad Orlikon turret in the back, replacing the 40mm gun on the Tech Tree version. It also faces destroyers almost every match, and while it does have torpedoes to counter them, it is still quite the easy kill for those destroyers. Personally, I think this one is alright. The asking price for this one is 1,600 Golden Eagles, or 800 on sale. I think this one's a better grinder than the Kari due to its higher tier, However, it is worth noting that it has some rather painful up tiers against destroyers. While it can kill them with a well-timed torpedo strike, it does generally lose to them. Overall, if the idea of having a quad Orlikon turret on a fast ship looks fun to you, go for it. Though, I will say that this one isn't doing as well as it once was. Up last is the USS Helena, sat at 5.7 and serving as America's premium cruiser. It costs 8,020 Golden Eagles, or 4,010 on sale. The most notable attribute of the Helena is its very high fire rate 125mm guns, which give it a significantly higher damage output than pretty much anything it faces. It is also one of the only ships in the game with a fully anti-fragmentation hull, giving it near immunity to high explosive ammunition. The ammunition of the ship is also rather hard to hit, as this ammunition here at the bottom seems to almost never detonate, forcing players to aim higher up in the hull than they normally would. Overall, the Helena is very tanky and has a high damage output against cruisers, however it is going to age rather poorly against Dreadnoughts due to its AP rounds having rather low penetration. Personally, I would recommend this one as it is probably the best premium cruiser right now. Just be warned that the Prinz Eugen and Mikuma are likely going to age a bit better against Dreadnoughts. Now that we've gone through all the vehicles that are currently on sale or going to be on sale, it's worth taking a look at the returning pack premiums and discussing if those will be worth it at the prices that they are likely going to be. One vehicle that I don't think will be returning is the USS Cowell, as it just returned temporarily for the US Navy's birthday event, and I don't think Gaijin's going to take it off sale for a week or two and then just put it right back up on sale. Though if it does return at 6,090 Golden Eagles, as that's where I'd expect it to be, it is likely the best destroyer premium for that price, However, the Helena will still be a better deal when half off. Up next for candidates would be the Haida, which is currently still off sale, and would also likely return for 6,090 Golden Eagles. Personally, I don't think that this ship would be worth that price, as it's rather expensive and again, the Belfast is a better deal, because it's not much more and will get much further. The Tribals are rather okay ships, and this one is a great EC starter, 
However, the price would likely still be too high, so I can't fully recommend it. That also goes for the last possible returning ship, the Kiyoshimo, which I can't actually view here. However, it is a premium Yugomo with more anti-air weaponry. It would also likely return for 6,090 Golden Eagles, which again, is too high for a destroyer, though it does make a good EC starter. Personally, out of all those possible returning premiums, I would expect it to be the Haida or Kiyoshimo, and I don't think either of them are worth the price that they will likely be at, 6,090 Golden Eagles. So I can't really recommend them, even half off. Thank you for watching my premium buying guide for the 2020 anniversary event. Keep in mind, at the end of the day, these are simply my opinions, and if you really want a vehicle, don't let me convince you not to buy it. Just know that these are my opinions on what is and isn't worth it at the moment. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more naval content.